Hello everyone, and welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel-Off Painting Project. Today I'm going to paint a tote bag. This one is very easy, very simple, and as you know, tote bags are very, 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 very versatile right now. Um, they definitely take the place of any plastic bags at the grocery stores. They're good for just in general carrying things, but what could be so much better than going to the store with your own bag that you painted and standing out from the crowd? So what we're going to do today is we're going to paint a very simple painting. I'm going to call this one Bird on a Willow. And we're going to do it from a very odd angle. We're kind of laying down in the grass looking up. So here's our moon. And our bird is going to be perched on a willow and some uh, grass blades from that willow. And we're going to make our background a very bright nice interesting color and we're gonna paint it on black and let's see what happens so let's just look at all of the equipment that you get first thing i like to always show you is that you get a nice pack of brushes with more brushes than you'll actually need for the project but it's good to have brushes for future projects and we like to provide you with that with each kit that you buy we also provide you with the colors today we're going to be using white excuse me purple pink and black. And then we also like to provide you with a plastic apron just to protect your clothes. We give you a spatula to help you remove the peels. And we provide you with a paper towel. Now you might want to get a couple more of these and what we don't provide you with what you might want to have is a cup of water. Now I've already um, fixed up my bag with some mask and tape around the border and the edges and I've already painted it black which you could paint it white or you could just leave it raw or you could just buy a white bag this one happens to be kind of a beige canvas tote bag and I wanted to try experiment in painting in black see if I can pull the colors up off of it and then repaint the black because it's a silhouetted painting now on the right for me I have my trusty beat up brushes and I do mean beat up because look but I love this brush just because something gets old doesn't mean you need to throw it away and uh, these brushes have been uh, very good for me and they've been helping me with a lot of my projects. So I really don't mind using them over and over and over again. I've taken um, a paper plate or plastic styrofoam plate or a piece of uh, palette sheet. And I've actually put my colors, I call it in a clock formation. You know, 12, 3, 6, 9. And basically I just put purple, black, pink, and yellow on there. Again, more colors than I'll probably use. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is try to put in my background. So I'm going to grab a little bit of purple. And I'm just going to splash that across the top. See what happens. You see the purple is showing up and that's perfect. And then what I'm going to immediately do is touch into a little bit of white. Just to throw some white into that purple and let it make me a nice light purple. Now let me just put some more purple on top of that purple. Yeah, like that. Blend that in slightly. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of wipe my brush off, with a paper towel, I'll grab a little pink, and I'm gonna just throw me in some pink down in this area. But I'm just letting the colors mix together. Throw some pink here. Yeah, I'll probably go back and add some darker purple up more near the top. I like the black showing through because it kind of looks like it's almost in a, a night scene. Then I'm going to take and mix a little bit of white <clears throat> with a little bit of pink and get me another value of pink out of that. Oh yeah, this is coming on quite nice. And then what I'm going to do is just reverse the order. Go back with regular pink. And then I'm going to go back with a little, let me wipe my brush off. Go back with a little white and a little bit of purple for a light version. That, I'm gonna come back with a darker value of purple. And I'm gonna end it with more pink. Right near the base area here. Now all I just wanted to do is just put some colors across it to represent my, my sky. It's pretty much like stripes and that's fine. Gives me what I want. Now I'll probably let this set up and then I'll go back and hit it again. So let me just wipe off my brush. 
them very carefully, kind of softly blend these colors together. Just let some of this just blend in, blend up. Let the colors just kind of mix together a little bit. Let me just blend this here, come back here, go back here. Now I'm just gonna wipe this off, go back to the dark purple again. Starting at the very top here. Just gonna go back in with some just straight purple right up around this area. I'm just gonna introduce this one more time. Let this come in here, then softly blend it down. Then I'm gonna go right into some pink again. And let's brighten this up a little bit. Softly blend this back. So even though it's stripey, I still want the colors to blend slightly. Let's go to a little bit more pink here. Just bring that down a little bit lower. This looks great. Definitely want that pink around my bird so when I peel it up, you can definitely see the, the blackness. So let me just go a little bit higher. And go like that. And I'm just going to mix a little tiny bit of white with some pink. Give me a lighter version of this pink. And then come underneath here. Let that pop. Yeah, that's looking great. And then I'll come back here. A little bit of white. I'm going to do some little purple. Give me a nice lighter version of that purple. Let's go a little bit more with that. Let that mix in. That's good. Softly blend this back. I'm liking this a lot. Now you could, of course, have painted the background white and just, you know, went with that. But I, I kind of like the way this is going. Let me swipe my brush because I want to go now with just some straight pink again right down here towards the bottom. And that's going to be my background. Just that quick, our background's in it. Now we can have some fun using just a silhouetted color and begin to paint some stuff. But before I do that, I do have to deal with my moon. And that's right there. It's just blocking off a circle shape for me. Let me just blend this softly. Make sure that this is nice and solid. Yeah, that looks great. That's looking really good. That's looking really good. Just let me blend this in a little bit. And right up in here a little bit. Now up here is not getting as purple dark as I want, but that's probably because it's mostly on the black. But let's just run some color across it one last time. See if we can't get that to purple up for us just a little bit more. Maybe mix a slight bit of that pink in there with it. There, that's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. I'm okay with that. I see some what I call divots that I don't want. So I'm just gonna come right over here and see if I can't get rid of that divot. And over here, I don't want those black spots to be too big. I don't mind the black showing through. There, that looks pretty good. Clean off my brush now. There. Wipe it on the paper towel. I no longer need the big brush. Okay, I'm gonna Grab me the spatula, and I'm just gonna find me a spot. Go in with the edges. I grip it here and try to just grab anything I can and just start digging up. Once I get it going, I don't need this anymore. I can just use my finger and pull up. There's my circle. Now that circle is gonna help me. If the bag were white already, my moon would be there already. But since I didn't do it that way, and I chose to do it this way, I'm going to take this round brush. It's a number eight round brush. And I'm just going to dip into some white. And then I'm going to introduce my moon. So I'm just going to take the brush very slowly and carefully, stand with the contour shape, make an outline within the line or the open space that's there. Because that's going to be my moon. And you all know when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie. That's amore. So let's make a little amore. Let's have a little painting love going on here. So 
I'm just going to stay within the contours. Okay. I'm just going to make sure I cover everything. I might, I might go over this twice. And normally, if I was painting alone and I don't have this fixed down, I could spin and flip it. But I'm just going to angle myself around the painting so you can see as I'm going around what I'm doing. Because I'm trying to get close to the edge. Like I said, I may go back over this a second time. But for right now, I'm just trying to get rid of all the little edges so I can deal with the middle part. So let's just keep patiently letting the brush, just dragging the brush. See, I'm just holding the brush like a pencil now. You see the grip that I have? If this were a dry canvas, which it will be in a few minutes, I would be resting my pinky down for balance. I think there'll be some videos on my uh, jrobinsonart.com site which is a site we use for our more corporate clients, business clients that have us come out and paint with residents and staff. And uh, you can go there to see how you can book us if that's something that you wanted to do. If you happen to be in the state of New Jersey or New York or some areas of Pennsylvania or Staten Island, we will physically come to you to you with everything and paint with you. Or you can go to peeloff.com to look at and see all of our wonderful kits that we have um, that are in boxes and they get shipped right to you. And you can paint on wooden boxes, you can paint on wooden circles, we paint on um, banners that you can put for the garden, we paint on canvases, we paint on canvas panels. And we have kits that are also available for bags. So you do have a large variety of subject matter and you have a large variety of surfaces that you can paint on when you want to have some fun with a J. Robinson Art kit. So just so you know. So I'm just trying to cover all the little divots I call them. Those little black little specks that are at the edges of my... Moon, I'm just trying to t make sure that I cover those up and I smooth my moon out so I don't leave too many brush strokes to have to fight with later. And I just got that little piece left, but I like to make sure my brush is saturated with paint. Not thickly, but I do like to make sure that there's paint on my brush. I like to dry brush most of the time, but I still want paint on my brush so that it moves and covers nicely. So you see, all I've done is just very carefully gone around. You probably could do this a lot faster than me. Just to make sure I got it in. And yeah, I'm happy with that. I still might go over that again. And I got time. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work in this area. I'm gonna pull me a little grass blade to hold up my bird. Then I'm gonna put me a willow that's hanging at an angle there, maybe some other lines here. And then I'm gonna put a few that kind of cross the moon. And then I might stick up some, some grass blades from the bottom just to show some hairs that are coming up. Just kind of giving you an idea of where I'm going. So I'm gonna clean off my number eight round brush. And you see after I clean that, I don't push it hard, I just roll it around. Let's see if I can show you on a paper towel. After it comes out of the water, I hit it a couple of times to knock off the water. And I take my brush and I literally just turn it like this as it's drying. You can see the water came off there. And what happens is it helps bring the brush back to a point, keeping it ready to go. The water is out of it, but you notice I didn't dab down a lot. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to roll around and take some paint. Just to twirl it just a little bit. Just to, again, keep it to a point, put some paint on it, and I'll keep loading this because, again, I like the fluidity <clears throat> of the brush having paint on it. And what I'm going to do is right here on this bird, I'm just going to rest them. So I'm just going to take, I think this is kind of dry, put my pinky on it, let the stem come around like this, and I'm going to paint right over the decal a little bit just to start a curve because of the weight of the bird. It's a little bird, but he still has some weight. And I'm just going to pull this 
like this, and you see where you see where I'm going? I'm gonna pull it down this way. I'm gonna pull it all the way down, like literally all the way down. So I'm just taking my time here again. I like to take my time with things. It's a good attribute to have. Don't be in such a rush. Don't try to be quick. Try to be accurate. Make sure your time is well spent. But take it so that you can very easily do exactly as I'm doing or even better. So even if you drag like this and you leave the little divots, I call them, those little open spaces, you just carefully go back, go a little higher than that divot, and then just drag through one more time. Or well, several times like this, just to... And you see, I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I'm not pushing down on a brush to spread it open. You know, I'm keeping it kind of in the air and I'm just dragging it lightly so that the line maintains a, a, a thinness. Now, it could be looked at as a thickness, but in this case, it's a thinness. Because I'm going to show you something. If you take the brush and you press down on it, you're going to open up the brush. It's going to start to spread. And what you don't want to do is push down too hard in this case because you're trying to make it maintain a thinness. So now there's going to be a willow that's sticking over here, but I'm not going to paint the willow part. I'm going to do another one of these, but I'm going to come from this angle, go across the peel tail and connect it as if they're all part of the same stem. So I may go over here and say, okay, how high do I want it? I want it to go about this high. I want it to come down, go through the tail, and then join here, like that. So let's just do that again. I'm just gonna drag this, maintaining that light touch, but yet I want paint on there so that I can make sure I'm leaving a mark. So I like to keep loading up my brush and slowly come down if I have to make this a little bit thicker to be able to support the weight of everything I'm doing, so be it. I just come right next to it. So now I have it kind of veering off a little bit, which is fine. The tail is going to be in the front of the back. You won't even be able to tell because it's silhouetted. But maybe right down here at the base, there's another little line that was growing that comes here and attaches itself to the base. So... This one is just a piece of blade, if you will, that's protruding here. Now, of course, I'm not going to leave it alone like that. It looks a little weird there. So maybe I'll put a couple of lines here that formulate another piece of willow that hasn't quite developed. But perhaps maybe it even goes off the canvas. So why don't we do it that way? Why don't we come like it's off the canvas and it turns here. And just comes down like this. We don't even see the top. Now, I know you can't tell, but it's it's on the tape here that's going to get peeled off. And this bottom is on the tape here that's going to get peeled off. But maybe there's even another piece to this that also comes off the canvas. But it comes off here. And yet it turns right into here. Like that. So now I got a couple of pieces that go this way, this way off the canvas, this one's going this way, this one's going this way, this one's going this way, and then I'll pull up some little blades down here, some other little lines. So now that we have that, why don't we jump over to the other side before we even come here? Because we're still giving this a chance to dry, which it is, but we don't need to rush. So we're going to come over to this side, and we're going to do something really cool here. Here... We're going to make a line that's going to go off the canvas. But when I come back to this one, this particular line right here, I'm going to put a willow that's going off the canvas here. Now, I'll show you what I mean when I get to the willow part. Right now, I'm just doing the lines. Right now, I'm looking to try and kind of put some lines in to help take your eye in several different directions. And then maybe even right over here, there's a little stem that points a little bit towards the moon, but it brings itself back down and joins which one? This one here. See? And then maybe, because this one is really long because it's off the canvas. We don't know how long it is. And remember, it's going to have the butt end of a willow. 
And then maybe there's even a little one that kind of goes off the canvas here and joins here. So now we have that one going off. Now we're going to focus on some lines that I want to bring a line maybe to this corner here and very carefully to this corner here. I don't want to cover my moon up too much, but I do want something in front of it because as I told you, this is a really weird angle. Some of you are going to say, the moon is too low. It's too low. Well, I guess it actually depends on where you are. And I'm not standing up looking at this. I'm kind of looking at it from down below. How low? I don't know. I'm laying in the grass. How high is the grass? I don't know. There's nobody coming to cut this grass. This is, this is wild grass. So it can go as high as my imagination will let it. So now I'm going to try and make sure that this willow comes up here but cuts right across the corner. There, that's a good corner cut. I like that. Because I don't want to block the moon, but I want to put a couple of, couple of willows that are kind of like growing from the ground and spreading out this way a little bit. It's your, it's your picture. You could do what you want. On this one, this is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and come and cover my divots. Don't worry, I'll finish my line in a second. But it's really important for me to not get this too crazy fat. So I want to focus on just the part right now that's coming through or across my moon shape to make sure I get that okay. And I want this angle now to kind of come a little bit this way. Just like that. That's the growth angle I want for this. Now I'm going to take this part here or maybe even this one. Maybe both of them. Maybe I'll extend both of them. Because this one I want it to go a little bit higher. Because I want to put a willow on it. So I'm going to put this just a hair or two higher like that. And maybe this one. Because I want a willow on that too. I'll take it a hair or two higher that way. That's good. Put a nice little willow here. A willow here. But now what I want to do is the other side of that moon. I want to put another line that cuts right across this side of the moon. See, there's a lot of strategy involved here. There's a lot of planning. Even if you're doing a random painting, you still got to have a plan. So I'm going to say maybe this one sticks up here, cuts across, comes across this corner, like, almost like a baseball. <laughs> Almost like a baseball, but it won't look like a baseball, trust me. Not when we're done with it. But you, for right now, you could use that analogy. It looks like a baseball strike. So I'm just going to make sure I go back up. See, it's starting to get a little fat on me, but that's okay. I'll straighten it out. And then I'm going to kind of veer this one a little bit this way. And I'll pull some smaller ones from the bottom. But right now, I just want to, again, set it up to see where it's going. Now, what you don't see clearly is this color is really on the tape. This is tape. Tape is covering all over here. I did that myself. When you get it, you'll get enough tape to make a square for you this way or elongate it. But that's what you'll get in the kit. You'll get tape strips for you to be able to you know, mask out your project because the one thing again about a peel off painting project we like to provide you with everything you need to do a project whether you use it or not or add more of your own we want to make sure that when you buy one of our kits you get everything you need straight from the top that if you can't get anything else or you can't go anywhere else or you're not able to afford anything else which i know that's not the case but if it is you will get everything that you need. So you don't have to go out and buy anything unless you just want to. Let's put a couple of these. One more going in this direction. As a matter of fact, let's make this one so it's just by itself. Like it just, it just growing here. Like that. There. That's nice. I like that. I like that a lot. Could be the wind is blowing. We don't know why the angle of that one is like that. But now this one is going to allow us to finally do what I like to do, 
which is to put a, a line across another line. So maybe for this one right here, there's a, a kind of a, a weedy one that hangs at a strange angle, but it cuts right across these two and comes back right to this. See that? There's a little line there like that. And then we're gonna go with one more. Now we're gonna make one more line. We're gonna make a few more lines so that we can have our grass looking really cool. So you see, I love these crossovers because it adds dimensional scope. So when I come down here with these little ones, I'm gonna make those really crazy. But these I just wanted to get in because these are part of the willows. I like to just call them willows. So now we're gonna put another one that maybe it connects over here. Comes a little long and goes right back into the, this one here. And then we'll do another one that just kind of stands alone but it goes in, in that direction also. But this one, maybe it just starts right here and just kind of grows right there. All right, so now we have enough of those. Why don't we pull up some, some blades? Let me clean off this brush. Show you again how I did it before. Tap it, see, take my brush and just very lightly roll it in a circle. See, I'm just rolling the brush. And that brings it back to a point. I sit it to the side. So when I need to go back to this brush, it's ready. So even the flat brush that I use is cleaned off. The round brush that I use is cleaned off. Because I think it's a very good idea that after you've done what the brush needs to do for you, even at that moment, even if you plan on using it again, don't leave your brushes sitting in the water. Clean it off. Dry it. Sit it to the side so it's ready for you. So now we're going to be using this flat brush. This is a very cheap, inexpensive, crafty brush. You have a nice set of flat brushes, along with round brushes and pointed brushes in the pack that we provide you. But on this one, I'm just gonna load the brush on both sides. Let me see if I can show you that. I'm gonna take the brush. See, I don't go in the middle. I pull the color from the edge and I turn it over and over till I get that little flatness back. Now, I'm not gonna paint this way. I'm actually gonna hold the brush See, let me show you. This is a flat side, I call it, and this is the pointed side. So from the pointed side, I'm gonna tilt the brush forward so that I'm literally holding it straight up and down. And at the bottom here, I'm just gonna pull. See that? See that? And cross over and do a bunch of these little lines. So I'm gonna load the brush the same way I just showed you. Come here, kind of like an X, if you will. You just want a bunch of these. And they could be different sizes. This is filler. I call this filler. This is the stuff that I'm going to fill the bottom here with. Some of it you're going to be able to see through. I'm more interested in the points than I am down here. So I'm just going to do this all the way across very quickly. Show you what I mean. It's all open. But if you see, the grass is starting to grow here. The weeds, rather. Whatever you want to call it. Grass, weeds. Go over the lines, it doesn't matter. Fat, skinny, doesn't matter. Variety is the spice of life here. Go all the way to the edge. See, see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of filling in, staying lower than some of these other ones because those are my main ones. I just want some fillers, just some lines, some, some grass lines, if you will. Go right to the edge. Now I'm gonna show you a trick. You see all these bottom open spaces? If you take the brush, and literally just scrub like this at the base. You can leave some of the tops. See the difference between here and here? And you can just change that height if you want. But the idea is that you're blocking some of those holes. You're, you're kind of filling in the bottom. And it starts to look like there's a nice full coverage here. Like you don't know what's going on down here. You can leave it open if you want to, but I, I don't want that. I want my bottom when I have my bag and I'm in the grocery store. I want this to be the base. I want this to be the bottom. I just want you to see these things. That's those, those little things. That's all I really want. That's what I want. You can leave it like this, swampy looking. That's what I call it. And that's fine. But I don't want that. I want all of this bottom covered. Because who knows? Maybe I want to sign my name in here. But I'm not. But I could. 
but I'm not. This is what I'm after. The difference between this and this is me just filling in the gaps at the bottom. I'm just taking a brush and I'm really just covering. I'm not even painting anymore. Not really. But I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You see, the brush stroke I'm using is more the same as how I made them, but I'm stopping short. So just in case something sticks up, it'll look a little hairy instead of it looking all like somebody molded in the middle. So this is good for me here. I'm gonna clean off my brush. Now who knows, let me show you some little little things here. Maybe in my space, let me clean off my brush first cause like I told you, I'm a big proponent of keeping the equipment ready. See, and you see I'll take my flat brushes and I, and I rub them flat. See this one paper towel for me could last forever cause I don't crumple it up. I like to leave it and literally it'll be sitting on the table and I just do, I'm just doing this. My brush is dry, it's cleaned enough. I put it with the rest of the tools that I use. Let's go to one we did. So now we're gonna go to what I call the script liner brush. This is a number two. It's kind of like a pointed round brush, but it has longer hairs. It can go as high as that or that, but this is a script liner brush. I dip it in the water first, and then I roll it around again, just to take all the loose hairs and bring it close together so it's now at a nice point. Let me see if I can mess this up to show you what I mean. So let's say you pick up your brush, it's been drying for a few days and it looks like this. See, this is how it looks. It's just sitting in the cup upside down, waiting for you to use it one day and it, you look like this. If you take that brush, just dip it right in the middle of the water, roll it around on your paper towel like I was showing you to do with the other round brush, very lightly to see how the water's coming off, but it brings it back to a very nice workable point. That's a good tip, that's a good trick. I dipped it right in the middle of this murky water that all of you want to clean and I never do because it's just painting water to me. It's not going in my stuff. It's not a watercolor. If I were using watercolors, that would be pristine clean. So now I'm going to take this brush and the way I load it is again, I'm not sticking it in the middle. I'll go right to the edge here and I'll just turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it with my finger because I want to keep it to a point because I'm going to take in here and I'm gonna pull up a couple of little skinny lines. Maybe something like this. Goes here, here, and there. Just like that. And maybe over here there's one that goes like this, like this, and like that, and we'll just put a fourth one, just so they're not the same. Those little ends are gonna give me the opportunity to take my brush and tap some little shapes as if some other little stuff is growing. These aren't willows. Who knows what these are? Who knows what these are? Some bird came through right on the stem. I'm going to put that. And I'm just going to give myself the look that there's something else. You want to call it a flower? Call it a flower. But I'm just putting something else for your eyes to see in this area that's different. Then we're going to add our willows. We're going to peel this off. See if we need to paint it. And our painting will be finished. So now over here, I'm going to take and tap, tap, tap a little shape. Tapping a little shape. Something wild. This is some kind of wild growth. Don't know what you want to call it. Don't even know if you want it in your painting. But that's going to help me to break up those lines and give your eyes something else to look at. Taking my brush. Going to run it in the water. Tap it from side to side. And I'm going to roll it in the, in the paper towel to bring it back to its point. And let it sit, point it, ready to go. So now I'm going to go back to this one. This one, see? Cleaned and ready. I'm going to go right into some black and we're going to add a couple of willows. Going right to the edge of my paint like I taught you. Pick up some color. Now we're going to paint a willow. Now what's a willow? It's actually called a pea willow, but I don't like to use that word because, you know, we're in a mixed company and I don't know if you got your kids around you or whatever, and I don't want to use all of these words that sound like profanity, but just stay with me. It's a willow. So at the tip of the willow is a bulb-like shape. It's almost like a corn dog. So I leave the tip, I draw a little shape like that. That's half of it. That's half of it. Let's just paint that half in. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, keeping it nice and small, but like a shape. And there's the willow part of this particular growth. Looks like a corn dog to me. There.
that's the corn dog look I'm looking for. It has a little tip that sticks out. So all I did was utilize the line to leave the tip and make that shape and fill it. I can make them as long as I want to. For my painting, for my bag, for this, that's a great size. And remember I promised you this one? This one I'm actually gonna paint on the outside of the canvas just to come in long enough to say, okay, maybe it stops here and you don't really see it because the other half is off the canvas. But I'm just trying to paint the shape. So I'm just having fun, pretending that it goes like this. And that little half that you see right there that's off the canvas, I don't, I'm not even gonna finish it. But if I wanted to show you, this is what it would look like kinda off the canvas. But when I peel this, it's gonna have half and half only. And that's okay, that's what I want. You don't have to do that, but that's what I want in this particular piece. So now we're gonna add one here. I'm just putting two more. I could put one here, but not necessary. I'm gonna put one here and here, and I'm gonna call that a day. This one I gotta be very careful because I don't want the, the willow part to be in my moon, but I do want you to see that there's a willow here. Maybe it ends right there. Again, doesn't have to be large. I'm controlling the narrative right now. I'm deciding how big things are, how fat things are, where the tips are, where they begin and where they end. This one is a little skinny one, but it's a willow nonetheless. Once I put this shape in, bam. See, and I'm gonna do one more, this one right here. And I don't want this one to come to my bird. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go high, leave the tip. It's up there in the purple area. I'm gonna come down here. Maybe this one goes right there. That's half of it. Now I'm gonna paint the other half, but you see how it's starting to come together? You see how the painting is actually starting to have a mood and a feeling to it? And I like that. You could add more of these if you want. You could put another one right here. Maybe we will, just to give it a third. But here we're gonna go and paint the other side of this willow. Get this baby in, looking good, and there. I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and solid, and I'm happy with it. See, simple painting, but lots of fun. You got a lot of good instructions. You got some really good tips out of me on this one. How to hold a brush, you see my pinkies now? You see how my pinkies now here, helping me to hold my, myself for balance? So maybe here we will have a little fun. Why not? Why not? Let's put a let's put a half a let's put a half a bud here that just kind of goes right here. Comes in the camera and goes out. Literally tiny, tiny little thing right there. But you'll know it's a willow now because you have those as reference. So without someone even asking you, what, what is that? What is that? It's growth. It's some kind of growth. There's some kind of growth that grows wild in the weeds. There. And we've said we was gonna put another one. So let me clean off this brush. Roll it around, see, always clean your tools. Ready to go. Gonna go in here, go to my edge, pull a little line. Maybe there's something that's growing right here. Right here, and this one has a line here, maybe there's a line on that, there's a line here. Don't forget, we're gonna be putting little things on it so it doesn't matter. So there, now we have the stalk of it. We don't know what it is. You always see me doing cleaning my equipment. I'm gonna go right back into it and we're gonna tap some shapes. So you see, I'm gonna tap some shapes on the tip, 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 tip. Now I can go on the item. So I don't like the way that looks right there. So why don't we tap here? Maybe there's some growth here. Heck, maybe there's some growth here and there's not even a line. Maybe we can make one, see? So that's that, it's got a nice balance now. Now I'm gonna take the same script liner brush, I'm gonna go through looking for divots and fill them. So I'm gonna take this little detail brush now. Now, it's gonna, now I'm gonna take the script liner and make it my detail brush to go in and I'm looking for open little holes cause the canvas is pulling against, the bag is pulling against the paint as it dries. So now I'm just gonna go in and fill these in a little bit stronger. So as it continues to dry, those will stay covered. 
Now for the bird. And not the bird like that. But now for the bird. As a matter of fact, that's a nice idea. This is this isn't nighttime. This is kind of like uh an early morning, if you will. It's like the the the, the sun is going down. You still saw some remnants of the moon fading away. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to make a kind of a V shape. I'm going to make a skinny little line here. I'm going to push down on my brush, lift up, and then turn it this way and give myself a bird in flight. And maybe there's a friend because they're coming to join this friend. But maybe this friend is here. So I'm just going to take and put a little skinny line. Push down on the brush. Just takes a little practice. And just go like that. And bam. I got a nice little shape. Tell you a secret before we go to this bird. If you were painting these in a beach scene. You can make these shapes in white. And then take and pull little black tips. On it. And you'd have yourself seagulls. Just a tip. Always like to help. So now I'm going to take. Clean off my equipment. I'm going to grab my spatula. Grip it at the neck, try to push under, get this to come up, and lo and behold, there's my silhouetted bird nesting on that flower. But as you can see, there's a little bit of purple there under the belly. I don't want that. I want those two to meld together so you can't tell the bird from the weed. So I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to get rid of that line. I'm going to just literally paint right over that line with a with my thin little script liner brush just to put him right on. See, that's the difference. I don't care about that one. That's fine. But if you want to get specific and go there too, you can. But I'm leaving it. This picture's done. You could have done this in color. You could have done this on a white canvas. You could have done this with a white background by painting any insides white. You could have just had a white bag. You could paint this on a yellow bag, red bag, blue bag, green bag, it doesn't matter. Using peel off is so fun, so helpful, that even for a silhouetted painting, you can get some wonderful effects out of it. Now, this is not a masterpiece. This is not the Mona Lisa, but it's a tote bag. So now, let me clear this stuff away, because I'm going to peel off all of the tape. And I want you to see now, the only thing that I cannot control is if there is any kind of bleeding. Bleeding being once I peel this off, if there's some edges that look like this. But what you can do is you can very carefully take a nice flat brush or that little detail brush and redo the edges a little bit or put a black box shape around your picture or a white box shape around your picture if it disturbs you that much. Me, I like to see some of that bleed. So that when people see my bag, they know it was handmade. Because if you went to a store, it would be super duper neat. Sometimes it is, but see, sometimes it's not. But that little bleed, that's almost like a, a, a mark of pride for me. It shows that my bag was made by hand. Not by machine. Not perfect. But it looks good enough. We'll come back to this edge in a second. So let's see if we can't peel down this side. And I like to peel my tape off at kind of an angle because I hate for the, the tape to stay up here because it gets harder to get off. So when that starts to happen, I stop and I try to come in another direction. So let's go in this direction. Yeah, I know it's kind of wet still, but it's going to be okay. I'm just going to peel this up. And see if I can take the tape off without me having to have a whole lot of little pieces to go under and clean off. But again, be patient with your stuff. It's, it's all about patience when it comes to art. Art is a patient game. And if you don't have it, keep doing art, you'll learn it. Because you could try to rush and you could try to make everything work out just so. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it needs you to just be patient. So let's see if we can't allow this to help us, see, remove this, see, instead of me fighting with this piece, I came from a different angle. Ooh, here's another one. But again, it's not a lot. It's not, it's not, it doesn't look bad even right now. So I'm not going to really worry about those things. I'm not, I'm not that guy that needs everything to be like so, so perfect. I just like the idea 
that I hand painted this bag. I got neat enough lines to box in my shape. I'm almost ready to go to the grocery store. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get this side in a second because this is not on that, so I'm not really worried. I could leave this to show you the finish and then take my time and peel this part off later. I just hate when that right here happens at this edge, but it's not happening right now. So let's not jinx ourselves. So now we're gonna grab this last side and I like to keep it at an angle. And we're gonna peel this off to see our finished product. See, I'm pulling it towards it, so it's not, I'm not pulling it this way. I'm going more towards the painting, so I can make sure I stay on the edge. I'm almost there. Look at that. Look at this bag. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. We just did this together. This bag will dry in like no time, and what I'm going to do is we provide you with like a, a sheet to put over it so you can iron it to push the color into the bag to even help the acrylic um, set itself up on your bag even better. But you don't have to do that right away. You don't have to do it until you're probably ready to wash it, if you will. But I like to do it so that this way in case. But I'm not gonna do it right now on camera. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try to peel this part off, but I'm not gonna waste a lot of time here because like I said, this is not here and this will come off easily. But it's just a matter of, you know, again, patience. And I don't want to hold you up. I want to be able to say to you, thank you so much for allowing me to come and paint with you. Just remember, you want to subscribe to peeloff.com on YouTube. Because if you go to peeloff.com in a browser, which is fine, it's going to take you to the Peeloff website to buy kits and learn some stuff. Uh, you could also go to jrobinsonart.com. If you are a company or a facility that needs bulk purchasing, um, if you're in the state of New Jersey, we'll be happy to come to your location, bringing everything you need and paint with your residents or your group or your staff or your party. Or you can be out of state and have kits bulk sent to you. Slightly different price, a little bit lower than if you bought it individually. But then again, you'd have to set yourself up and there's a whole lot of information about that on jrobinsonart.com. For peeloff.com, you can just go there and look at all of the different kits that we have, purchase whatever you need. It'll come to you in like three days, and you can just open that box. You could do a video of a box open. That would be great. Just make sure you let me know and share it with me. But you could do that to share it with your friends and paint the project, and you will get projects like this. Well, again, thank you so much for painting with us. I hope you had fun. I know that I did. For this very simple painting, we did a lot of really cool stuff, and you're not even limited to this. You could have as many of these as you want, as many birds as you want. You could take this bird and all this black and make it colorful. There's videos that's going to come out to show you how you can expand on even our silhouetted images. We'll save that for another time. Again, I just want to say thank you. Have a great day. And don't, don't forget, always grab some paint, have some fun. Push around a few colors and be creative. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.